you are God's creature designed for glory you are not designed for shame return it back in Jesus name I rebuke the devil God is a God of mercy when you understand that God is a God of mercy you are a creature of intention God created you intentionally get set for a moment of empowerment with your host glory Benjamin to God ben hallelujah you are blessed you are lifted you are highly favored of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus Christ this is Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center I am specially welcoming you to a moment of empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. I am so excited because it's going to be life transforming, it's going to be enriching, and it's really, really going to be impactful. Thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast today. And I'm believing God so much that God will use today's broadcast to move you to the next level. And you know what? Today, we're going to still be talking about marriage. You know, in the, in the past couple of weeks, we've been talking on the issue of marriage. And today, we're going to continue as we talk about marriage. I'm so excited because God did not design marriage to be endured. God actually designed marriage that you enjoy it. God wants you to enjoy the best of his plan and his program even in your marriage. So it is God's plan that your marriage work. It is your, God's plan that you enjoy marital bliss and marital peace. However, there are certain things to know. There are certain things to understand in order to fully enjoy this great institution called marriage and that's what we're going to be looking into today is going to be a continuation of the things i have been teaching on making your marriage to work but right before we go into god's word today i'd like you to call somebody if you know anyone that is having marital issue or you have children that are yet to be married you can call them together right now tell them that it is time to be empowered because one of the things that helps us enjoy marriage as a provision of God is for us to know the prescription of God. And what do I mean? I mean for us to be able to identify what has God said concerning marriage and what is God's mind concerning marriage. When we know this, we will be able to rightly and perfectly practice it and enjoy it. You cannot enjoy the best of God if you don't know and discover what is God's mind for that thing and for your life on the earth. And that's what we're going to be looking into today. So call a friend, tell them the station you are watching me right now because it is time to be empowered. You know, if this is your first time of tuning into this broadcast, Moment of Empowerment is a broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. There is a place for you in God's program. There is a place for you on the earth. And one of the things that Moment of Empowerment has been designed to accomplish is to empower you in order for you to be able to fully step into this program of God for your life and be able to manifest as God desire and enjoy what God has designed for you on the earth. I pray for you today that God will use this broadcast to heal you, to solve problems for you, to open closed doors before you, to push you into the realm of all possibilities in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And beyond where things have been working before, God will cause things to work for you more than ever before in Jesus' precious name. So get ready, get set, because in God's word today, you're going to connect with light, you're going to connect with revelation, and you're going to connect with the things that will impact you and move you to the next level. But right before I continue, I want to invite you to the Empowerment Center. World Revival Outreach Mission, the Empowerment Center, is a non-denominational, multicultural church fully committed to empowering lives for destiny fulfillment 
We are a community full of energy, faith, and most importantly, people who want to serve God and one another. We're dedicated to being a place where you can believe, belong, and become all that God intends you to be. The Empowerment Center is committed to being a loving, healing fellowship where you can discover the abundance of life in Jesus Christ. Newcomers are extended a most cordial invitation to come and join us for an anointed, powerful, and uplifting worship of God. For more information, give us a call today. Oh, glory be to God. Welcome back to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I am your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center here in Arlington, Texas, USA. Now, I would like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational, multicultural, world-based church of God. It is called the Church with a Difference. It's a place where you encounter the person of God, you encounter the power of God, and you enjoy the presence of God. The information is right on the screen. I'd like you to be part of any of our life-transforming services. On Thursdays, we meet 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Sundays, we meet 10 a.m. to 12 noon. I want you to come be a part of what God is doing here at the Empowerment Center. It's going to be life-transforming for you as you come. Now, write down the address on the screen. And if you need more information or you need prayers, call the number on the screen. We are passionate about praying for you. And we are so much uh, uh, committed to ensuring that you enjoy the best of God in the land of the living. So call the number on the screen. And in case you are watching this broadcast outside of uh, our, our Metroplex, I want, you can be part of our services by joining our live uh, services. You can watch our services live on our website. If you go on the website on the screen, the information is on the screen where you can watch our life transforming services. We also are privileged to have a 24 hours uh, uh, television platform where you can be watching all our services and watch all our videos. And that will be a great blessing to you as you do so in Jesus' name. We are also privileged you can watch and listen to our service on the radio. We have a 24 hours internet radio that is called the Empowerment Praying Radio. All our services are transmitted live on the radio. Write down the website, go on the website, and I want you to be listening to the services, listening to prayers that will turn situation around for you in the precious name of Jesus. All right, now let's go into God's Word today. Uh, uh, I'm going to continue the teaching series that I started some couple of weeks ago on making your marriage work. And this is going to be part three, making your marriage to work. And the whole thing about this teaching series is to be able to reposition your marriage to the next level, to be able to open the eyes of our understanding on what is God's mind concerning marriage and also how can we make our marriages better, as well as being able to heal every hurting home or marriages that is passing through difficulty. Now, in the past episode of this, in this series, we have discovered that marriage is essentially God's intention. Marriage is not man's invention. Marriage is God's idea. And if it is God's idea, we will need God's idea as well, as well as his insight and instruction to make it work. And one of the things we have discovered is that to make our marriages work, we need wisdom. And that was why I started by unveiling some things I have called wisdom senses. We've looked into some couple of them. Uh, let me just share some with you for those that are just watching this for the first time. We have discovered that uh, marriage is designed to work. Marriage is designed to work. No marriage is set up to fail. When you understand that, you will realize that all I need is to discover how to make it work. And we discovered also that every marriage that will work is a function of our action, our reaction, and our intention. Those three things play a pivotal role in the success 
or the failure of any marriage. Now, we realize further that if we make our marriages work, we must be able to properly handle conflict. We also must be able to properly handle what I call the three F's. I talked about the family, I talked about finances, and I did talk about friend. Now, in case you missed, uh, I've talked about it in two different broadcasts. If you missed any of that broadcast, just go to our website. The website is on the screen. And when you get there, you click on watch rebroadcast, watch TV rebroadcast. When you click on that, it takes you to where you can actually watch our, all our previous episodes and you can watch the one on the area of marriage. And today, I want to take it a little bit further. And I'm, today, I'm going to be really digging into uh, what I call seven C's for enjoying marital bliss. Or we can call it seven C's for making our marriages to work. And I want you to understand, like I said over and over again, that marriage is designed to work. Marriage is God's plan. And we saw from scripture that the plan of God is good. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Another version call it, I know the plan that I have for you. The Bible says it is the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So it is very evident from this text of the scripture that what God has or what God thinks or the mind of God for our marriages is good. God wants you to enjoy marriage. God wants your marriage to prosper. God wants your marriage to work. The thought of God for your home is good. However, if we will enjoy this goodness, there are certain things we need to embrace. There are certain things we need to stop doing. There are certain things we need to start doing. And there are certain things we need to do more. So that is what These I've called seven the seven things are like universal laws that will help any marriage to work if these things are embraced and actually worked on. Like I've said, no marriage will work without it being worked upon. So let's take our time to look into these things that I've called seven, seven C's that can actually help our marriage. Number one is what I call connection. Number one of this C is connection. One of the things, one of the reasons why God actually created marriage is for it to be able to be connected together. Two people connected together. That's why the Bible says, and the man shall leave his father and mother and be connected, be cleaving. That is what it means. So marriage is about leaving and cleaving. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. That is connection. And they shall become one flesh. So they are connected. Any marriage where you don't see connection, it's a risky game. It's almost breaking down. Because what marriage is supposed to do is to really bring us together. So if we are not enjoying real connection in our marriages, that means there are certain things to work on. There are certain things to work on to make it work better. You must understand that how connected you are as marital partners influences how peaceful your life will be. Connection is actually the core that builds marital union. You, have, you need the cord of connection. You need to be connected as spouse. So marriage works and it works better where there is connection. So that means we need to deal with anything that tampers with our ability to connect together. Now, on the issue of connection, I realize that there are, there are two dimensions of connection we have to embrace in marriage. Number one is what I call upward connection. And what does that mean? That is talking about the connection with God. The more connected you are with God, the more peaceful you will, the more peace you will enjoy in life. The more connected you are with God in your marriage and as, as, as marital partners, the more joy you experience in your marriage. You know why? Because the Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And in John 15, verse 5, Jesus said that for without me, you can do nothing. That means we may not be able to enjoy all dimensions of success in our marriages without building solid connection with 
God. One of the things that this helps us to do is that it helps us to actually embrace and be filled with more of the nature of God. And the nature of God is love. God is love. So the more connected we are to God, the more of his love that flows through us and flows in us. And this helps our marriages to work better. Number two connection I talked about uh, is the sideway connection. And that is talking about the connection between the man and the woman. So we have an upward connection, then we have a connecting cable between us. So when I look at marriage, I see it as a triangular format. I see it as, a, as in a triangular format. That means we both, the man and the woman, have a connection with God, and then the connection comes down, then we have a connection with ourselves. So whatever flows from God to us will also flow through us and to us. So we must understand we need to build connection. Intimacy is essential. We need to build this connection between one another. As married partners, you are supposed to be the best of friends. You are supposed to be the best of friends. In Genesis 2.25, the Bible says they were both naked and they were not ashamed. That is, they have built connection that they were not even seeing their nakedness. They were not ashamed of it. They were not ashamed to talk to one another. They were not ashamed to communicate. They were not ashamed to unveil their minds. And that is what helps them to be able to build a positive connection. And part of the ways we can build connection in our marriages is that we need to deal with suspiciousness. We need to deal with suspiciousness. Don't suspect one another. That is one of the uh, things that destroy marriages. We need to be open to correction. Part of the ways we build connection is by being open to correction. We also need to be willing to change. When you do things that are wrong, embrace correction. Be willing to change. That helps a lot to be able to build connection in our marriages. All right. Number two, C. Out of this seven C is the C that I've called care. Every marriage that will work, care must be involved. And by care, we are talking about love. We are designed to care for one another. You know, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to 23, the Bible says God saw that for Adam there was no help made for him. Now, I looked at that scripture that God was saying here that for the animals, they were help made. You know, they, they had mates they, some, they, because God created them two, two. So one had the other to care for the other and Adam was there to care for them. But for Adam, God said he had no help made. So God was looking at Adam and he saw a need that he needed to be cared for by somebody. And that was why God created and brought out the woman. So if any marriage will work, and if you take your life, marriage to the next level, we need to care for one another. Caring is essential. We need to love. We need to walk in love. We need to be concerned about the well-being of the other. We need to be concerned about the welfare of your partner. And these are things that enhances marital bliss. You see, one of the major demands of marriage is love. Hardly will there be any marriage that will succeed without love. And when I'm talking about love here, I'm talking about the love of God, the genuine love of God. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, Ephesians 5, 25, Bible says, Husbands, love your wives. How? Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So God is placing a demand on husband to love their wife. And not just even the husband now. Bible also enjoins us to love one another. But there is a mighty responsibility and a demand on the man to love. And there is a demand on the woman to submit. When we embrace these things by caring for one another, it helps our marriages and it moves our marriages to the next level. Number three of this C is character. The C of the C, the third one is character. Hardly will any marriage last long without good character. Actually, it is char character is like what determines the longevity of any relationship. If there is no good character, uh, relationships will not last. So, to make marriages work, we need to embrace good character. Marriage is designed to succeed, but character can make it to fail. I mean, lack of good character can make it to fail. 
So character is like the sum total of who you are and the sum total of what you do. To make our marriages work, therefore, we must work on our attitudes, we must work on our behavior and embrace good behavior that can help our marriages and move our marriages forward. Now, one of the questions I always want married partners, I mean, marital partners to ask themselves is this. What you are doing to your spouse, if she will be the one doing it to you, will you accept it? You know, that is the test of our attitude. So we need to test our attitude to see the one that is wrong and be able to bring it out and remove it from there. Some of the things that causes conflict in marriages is just traceable to character. If you are not willing to change who you are, your character or embrace good attitude, you will definitely affect your marriage negatively. So to enjoy marriage, marital bliss, and to make our marriages work, we need to embrace good character. We need to be patient. We need to be humble. We need to be respectful. In home, respect must be reciprocal. When you respect your spouse, you must also respect your spouse in return. There are things to deal with. You need to deal with anger. You need to deal with pride. You need to deal with anger. We also need to be able to discipline our throng. Because if you don't watch what you say, what you say can affect the whole of the joy and the peace that you have in the home. And I want you to understand the Bible has given us some of the things that we can embrace called the fruit of the Spirit in order to enjoy marital bliss. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and 20, verse 22 to 24, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against these things there is no law. So we must understand that these things help our marriages to work. I pray for you today that every home that is passing through difficulty because of character, deformity, and issue, the Lord will step in. Grace to change will be released upon your home in that precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, I will be right back. And once I'm back, I'm just going to conclude on this. I might not be able to finish all the seven today, but I'm going to continue in the next broadcast as we continue on this series, Making Your Marriages to Work. I will be right back. Welcome back to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I am still your host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center here in Arlington, Texas, USA. Now, I would like you to go get that book, Help from All Side. It's going to be a great blessing to you. Uh, it's one of the books that I've written under the inspiration of God on how we can connect with help both from above and also on the earth. The book has really been a great blessing to thousands of people. Testimony coming in of what God has used the book to do in the lives of people. And I know it's going to touch your life as well. Now, you can get the book on Amazon. It's available on Amazon, both the print version and the ebook version. You can go to Amazon and get it. And if you want, you can call the number on the screen and place an order for your copy. It will be a blessing to you. All right. Let me try to round up today on what I call the seven C's for making your marriages work. And like I said, these C's will help us and help our marriages in order to move it into the level of enjoying marital bliss. Now, I've talked about three C's, and the fourth one is communication. Communication. Communication can build marriage. Communication also can break marriage, depending on the kind of communication. In marriages and generally in relationships, there are positive communication and there is what I call negative communication. Now, it depends most times on the quality and the pattern of presentation. I'd like you to understand that what you say is important. Also, more important is how you say it. And also, as part of it, is when you say it. 
we must understand that relationship rides on communication. Our ability to communicate rightly will position our marriages and our relationship to the next level. So we must understand, like the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, the kind of things that we should say to one another and how we should present the world to one another. You might be right, but the way you present what you say can scatter the whole family. Now, Ephesians 4.29, the Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So whatever can corrupt, whatever can defy, you have to watch your word. Let no corrupt communication as a wife, as a husband, to your, to your, between one another. We have to watch what we say. But look at what the Bible is telling us to be using. He said, but that which is good, to so the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So God is telling us here that there are certain things that can help our marriages to work in the area of communication. Let your word not be corrupt, but let your word be good. Let your word be able to edify. It should not defile the person, but it should edify. It should not bring down the person, but it should edify. So even when you are presenting your issue or communicating, we must be able to choose the right word to use. We must be able to mind what you say, when you say it, also how you say it. And in my own word, I have concluded that we have to always think before we speak. Because when you think before you speak, you'll be able to use good words and also words that might be edifying. Avoid being judgmental in your presentation. Avoid words of condemnation. And many times also avoid costly jokes. They, have, they could be very costly and they might lead and end to what and where we don't really want it to end to. All right, I'm going to continue from here in the next episode on Moment of Empowerment, but I know God has reached out to you. i like to hear from you. You can call the number on the screen. Let me know how this broadcast has been a blessing to you. And if you have any question or you need help in this area, please don't hesitate to send an email to the email address on the screen, and you can also call. If your marriage is having an issue, you can call for prayers, seek the face of God, and also embrace these things I'm sharing with you by practicing them. And that is how you can move your marriage to the place where God wants it to be. But right before I go today, I want to pray with you that everything you desire from God, the Lord will do it for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing into your body. I come against every struggle. I come against every trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be peace in your home, peace over your children, in Jesus' precious name. Until I come your way again next time on this same station, stay empowered and keep empowering others. God bless you. Joining us. Amen. Watch us every week at the same time for your moment of empowerment. Visit us online at wordrevival.org or call us at 972-639-1762.